This video is about ferrite circulators or isolators. Some basic concepts. Schematically we show telewaves isolators in uh, our circuit diagrams as shown here. Telewave offers single and dual stage isolators. This is a single stage. There's an input and output in a load. That's what makes it an isolator and instead of just a uh, circulator. Essentially, though, the uh, input goes to straight to the output. Any reflected power coming in the output goes to the load. This is what the internals of a ferrite isolator looks like, or circulator. Uh, we come into uh, port 1 here, and it will go around to port 2, and the forward loss will be very low to port 2. However, any reflection that's coming into port 2 going this way will uh, go to this port, which is port 3. Anything that uh, reflects or comes into port 3 will go around to port 1. So between port 2 and port 1, there will be very high isolation in the reverse direction. Uh, but from port 1 to port 2, it has very low loss. And any reflections or other signals that come in this port will be dumped into the dummy load down here. The dual isolator by Telewave has two units inside of it and is represented schematically as shown here. With the dual isolator, you have two units in the uh, case. Again, port one goes through the first one and the second one and out to port 2 with very little attenuation. Anything coming backwards through port 2, reflections or other signals will go down and be dumped into port 3 and to the dummy load. If there's any remaining energy, it'll go up and back into the second one. And uh, port 4 will receive that and put it into the dummy load on port 4. Let's take a look at the uh, situation when you have a poor match, like on port 2 here, either poor or an open circuit, short circuit. Let's say that it's uh, the worst case, short or open, where all the energy is reflecting back into the port. There's no, nothing out here, so it can't go out that port. So we come into port 1 through here, very low loss to port 2, but there's nowhere to go in port 2, so it goes down to port 3 and all of the energy gets dumped into the dummy load on port 3. There might be some that reflects and it goes up through here and then back down to port 4. So you will have some here as well, but most of the energy is in port 3. And then of course uh, this absorbs whatever is remaining and very little gets back to port 1. The T1530 and the 1560 are the uh, single and dual isolators. This is the specification, 118 to 174 megahertz. You have to order it wherever you want it in that band. From that, you may be able to retune it from plus or minus uh, 4 megahertz if you need to because of a frequency change. I'll show you the graph a little later. The Viswar is typically about 1.25 to 1. It's 50 ohms in female. The input is either on the right or the left depending on what you need for your particular installation. Temperature range, uh, range is minus 22 to one, plus 140F and minus 30 to plus 60C so that it has a broad range that it maintains its tuning. Let's take a uh, look at the rest of the specs for this particular uh, device. The uh, isolator uh, 1530, T1530, is uh, single. 35 dB of typical uh, isolation, 30 dB minimum, insertion loss, 4 tenths of a dB. We'll see some chart figures on the loads required. The weight's about uh, 3 pounds or 1.4 kilograms. The shipping weight is about 4 pounds or 1.8 kilograms. And of course you have the uh, dimensions here. 1560 is basically two 1530s, so 1560 is the uh, designation. It's a dual. 70 dB typical and maybe 60 dB minimum. 0.8 dB of insertion loss. Again, we'll have a chart uh, indicating the loads necessary. Uh, 
about six pounds of uh, weight, 2.7 uh, kilograms. Seven pounds shipping weight and 3.2 kilograms. And here's the uh, specification for the unit. If we're talking about dummy loads on these isolators, the T1530 single isolator uses 135 watt lo load, as does the 1530CM, which is cavity mount single isolator. 1530-60 uses a 60 watt on a uh, uh, single isolator. Um, T1560 dual isolator uses two TWL35s, one on each port. Uh, if you want to run at 60 watts uh, for that one, you use a 60 watt on the load for the output side and 35 for the input side. And for the CM, you use two TWL35s. That's the cavity mount dual one. Here's the power levels that you can use. 60% duty cycle, you can run 100 watts. But that's not something you're going to do at 100%. You can only run around 60 watts. And the 80-watt uh, level can be run uh, at 80% duty cycle. What we have here is a setup using an inexpensive spectrum analyzer to look at the uh, throughput. I have the input over here with uh, the output over here. This is a reversed one you'll see on the label here. It's inverted, but okay. Uh, so what should happen is this, this trace will be the loss between here to over here. And it shows the tuning range over which it goes. We'll look at that uh, more carefully in uh, the next picture. The yellow line here represents the uh, input to the output curve. As you can see in the middle here, well, for about a little under a megahertz either side of 151.5, uh, which is where we're tuned, it's uh, about 0.66 dB down, according to uh, the measurement here on the marker. And it's about uh, 1.75 and 1.12 down, uh, 140 to 165. So it's fairly broad that way, but you wouldn't be using it out uh, that far. The blue line here represents the isolation if you put the signal from the output through back to the input. So this is the isolation of any reflected power or energy coming from outside uh, the isolator back through the isolator. It will get attenuated about uh, 60 dB here, looks like, on frequency. And either side of the frequency, it looks like it's a little bit more. Actually, this probably comes down like this. The problem with... Uh, the Rigel unit is that the Rigel has a uh, little bit of leakage in the tracking generator from the tracking generator to the uh, input to the spectrum analyzer, and it's about 60 dB down. So you get uh, you get this anomaly here uh, based on that. But you can see the trend here line. It's going to go down here, maybe to there, and this one is the same thing. So that's. Uh, it's making spec either way, but uh, a better instrument, if you can afford one, will give you better results. Then, if I uh, take the uh, same situation where the power is coming through the unit from the outside or the output side, this purple line here shows what uh, the attenuation is going to the first dummy load on the output of the uh, isolator. And as you see, it doesn't attenuate much. So all of all the energy all over this whole spectrum here, down to about 7 dB on this side and 10 on this side, will be going into the first dummy load that's on there. And then, of course, it'll go back through to the second dummy load as well. And whatever energy is left after this, the first one absorbs most of it, 
will be uh, picked up in the second dummy load. So I thought I'd just show this curve to you to show you uh, exactly what the response looks like uh, for those three conditions. In summary, a ferrite isolator is a device that allows power to transfer from an input port to an output port with very low attenuation. Any power that's reflected back into the output port or energy coming from external sources connected to the output port will not be able to go back to the input port but will circulate to the next port where it will be absorbed by the dummy load. For a dual isolator, any energy not absorbed by the first dummy load will be sent to the second dummy load which will absorb most of the remaining energy. Very little of the energy reflected back into the output port will be seen at the input port. Isolation will be about 30 dB for a single isolator and 60 dB for a dual isolator. Telewave isolators should be ordered for the desired output frequency but can be field tuned over a small frequency range if required for a frequency change, provided that appropriate equipment is used. A field tuning guide is available online.